Hello, Christian Livingstone here, and this is my new project. It's a trike project, an e-bike trike project, and as some of you may know, uh, uh, I've done uh, another uh, trike with the uh, uh, the uh, planetary geared hubs that are laced right into the wheel, and this is a different configuration. This is the uh, mid-drive system, and I just got this in, in uh, mail the other day, and uh, it was delivered to me, and uh, it's interesting, it's, it's different, and uh, it's a little challenging. And this trike, you know, it, it wasn't something I really planned. I took uh, an adult trike, uh, an old, simple, cheap one uh, in trade for uh, uh, refinishing a uh, vintage porch glider for a, a neighbor client of mine. I do her uh, uh, lawn maintenance and some... Uh, landscaping and uh, you know she had this thing for 30 years her son gave it to her years ago and it was pretty beat up so I refinished it and didn't want to take any of the money out of pocket from her so she had that old trike and she said oh yeah somebody just gave that to me and so I accepted that and I thought I would just uh, spiff it up a little and sell it on the street uh, right outside the place here and uh, put a sign on it uh, but it, it was only single speed and I thought well I don't want to sell it or even give it away to a friend with a single speed because if they encounter a little grade uh, you know it can be a problem so I thought well I'll just I'll just get one of those uh, five speed uh, drop-in hubs that the trikes you know have a slot for and uh, you know I'll feel better about doing it that way and uh, so I bought one and uh, sure enough it did not fit and so I thought well you know I weld I, I'm an amateur TIG welder and fabricator so you know I'll just uh, chop up the tail section of the trike and you know build a, a different gearbox for that internal hub to set right in and you know be done with it and put a little touch to it you know my little touch because I like to use diamond plate so you know that was the reason I could you use some. So I did that and installed this uh, five-speed hub here, but uh, you know the chain line, it, it messed up the chain line, it was off. So I decided, well, I'll fix that chain line. I'll, I'll chop out the uh, bottom bracket down here where the uh, crank set goes through because it was one of those one-piece uh, uh, crank sets that you can't adjust them. They're cheap. Uh, they're old. They've got cage bearings. They're they're not very good, but they're they're you know heavy duty, sturdy, cheap. So I, I chopped that out, uh, welded in a, uh, a more standard uh, 68 millimeter bottom bracket, put uh, seal bearings and a different crank set. And sure enough, uh, the chain line was uh, spot on, and you know all was well. And uh, always in the back of my mind I thought well maybe uh, maybe I'll electrify this you know but you know undoubtedly I won't get my money out of it at that point so uh, I kind of put it on hold and then the uh, uh, tail section of this trike had one of those cheap uh, wireframe uh, baskets in it and it's they're they're poor and they they're flimsy and on my uh, electric trike the dual wheel uh, uh, hand cycle trike uh, you know, kids love to hop in the back of it and go for rides and stuff. But the uh, two-wheel drive uh, electric hand cycle, there's one of the uh, 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 hub motors, geared hub motors, planetary gear hub motors. The other one's over there. And one of them I've modified to be clutchless. When the clutch uh, started failing and uh, uh, I decided not to uh, fix it and just uh, make it clutchless to, uh, you know, kind of sever that weak link and uh, it works fine I dig it uh, in the uh, headset there that's a bottom bracket up top you see a video camera that starts automatically and it's a lot of fun uh, you know whenever I'm riding you know it records everything in case uh, somebody runs me over and kills me they can look at that and say oh yeah you know that guy did it <laughs> But anyway, these uh, two uh, uh, rear drive hub motors, I've been using it for oh, about a year now. It's, uh, it's winter right now, uh, February, uh, surprisingly warm. But, uh, you know, these uh, uh, two uh, hub motors uh, work really well in the snow and the uh, 
mud. There's my, uh, uh, you know, Christian anarchist plate. Uh, you know, I read the Bible and I, I read between the lines and I can see that, uh, you know, the, the message and the gospel of the kingdom uh, of Christ uh, is... Uh, very anti-statist, and uh, so, you know, I want nothing to do with the state and the extortion racket that it is, and uh, so, you know, I don't have a social security number or driver's license or any of that stuff, and uh, that's just what that's about. So, yeah, quick clip of the uh, uh, electric hand cycle for a reference, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun, so this other trike will undoubtedly be fun, too, no matter what I do with it. I, I think I'm just going to use it to uh, 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 as a staging platform for experimenting and you know letting people try it and having fun with it. They tended to uh, want to put their finger on the tire as it goes forward which you know can be a little hazardous but uh, uh, so I decided to uh, fabricate out of expanded metal a nice sturdy uh, uh, cargo bay or bin in the back but integrate some uh, diamond plate uh, fenders uh, right along the side so you know it prevent kids from doing that because I know kids are going to want to jump in here so uh, uh, I did it that way and uh, but I always held out do I really want to energize because you know it caught it's pretty costly to uh, you know for a good lithium battery in the motor but let me tell you this uh, mid drive system was only 389 I think there might have even been free shipping uh, from Luna Cycle, so it was very affordable uh, to get this system, and uh, it's very robust too. It's it's a real potent motor, and it's it's a surprising value. So I decided to uh, to go ahead and get it because it was such a good value. I do have another battery uh, on hand as a backup, so you know I thought why not? Why not go for it? You know there are these Bafang or uh, motors that are a little cleaner in their execution and a little more elegant a fit up for most typical bikes but this uh, uh, bike or trike you know it's going to be more difficult and, and I'll show you why. Now typically the configuration for these uh, uh, mid drives is for the uh, the motor to be forward the uh, spindle of the crank set here. This is the, the crank set spindle. Usually the way a typical uh, bicycle uh, has its uh, uh, down tube from the uh, headset coming, you know, there's more clearance for this motor to be up here, you know, about even keeled right here. But not so on this. This tube is right in the way. This is a step through kind of trike with a low slung down tube and uh, it's a problem because you don't want the motor hanging way down there. I mean, I suppose you could do it. I don't like it. Um, I thought about maybe uh, trying to perch it in uh, this little little armpit area here, but I don't know if I want it setting up here. It's a pretty big motor. The buffons are uh, a lot smaller. They don't have the output and wattage as this one does. This baby's uh, apparently uh, uh, reportedly a beast so you can uh, throw whatever you want at it as far as volts and uh, get a lot of wattage so then I thought well I'll just rotate this baby around and perch it maybe back here and, and that's uh, that's got me uh, thinking I, I might uh, give that a shot but uh, I'll have to change these brackets a little to get it just about right where I want it and being careful to uh, keep these, uh, see there's two sprockets that come with this freewheeling uh, uh, chain set here, this uh, chain ring, there's two of them. So, uh, you know, while the uh, uh, bike is coasting and stuff, it freewheels, it picks up when you uh, pedal. So there's no magnetic drag from the motor with this and it free wheels at the motor so that's a good thing but uh, but let's see if I if I do something else I, I always thought that you know I might have a problem with this configuration and uh, so I 
did uh, make or take some steps by uh, placing this uh, uh, five-speed hub and I, I placed another sprocket on it. And I don't know if you can see it here. There. So you can see uh, there's two sprockets. I can locate that motor in the back here somewhere and either grab onto this sprocket or this sprocket depending on it with the uh, rotation of the motor it really would be better if I mounted it uh, over here and grabbed onto this sprocket and then have the uh, output uh, coming from this sprocket and making that the drive wheel typically you would have these uh, chains coming this way and then output uh, right off this one but since I placed another one here I think it'd be better to mount the motor uh, uh, and drive it back this way and then out that way so if this doesn't work up forward here I'll just delete all this and uh, put the motor alone in the back so one uh, nice thing about the uh, Cyclone uh, kit is that uh, when you do install this uh, dual uh, uh, chain ring here and uh, you know the one outboard one is uh, driven by the motor and the inboard one uh, follows down to the uh, uh, sprocket of whatever you're driving. In this case I've got the five speed gearbox there. The, the chain link hits right on with this uh, uh, 68 mil millimeter bottom bracket that I mounted so you know with the uh, with the uh, standard crank set I had on there and the crank arms the chain line was right on target and when you do place this uh, uh, cyclone kit on there to a, a 68 millimeter uh, bottom bracket which is uh, really the most pervasive one out there the, the chain line is going to be okay but they even include an extra bearing that uh, if you have, uh, I believe it's a 74 millimeter bottom bracket, which may be the, the next most uh, uh, found uh, in the market, uh, it will fit that as well. But one thing to note that uh, you'll end up with an offset. See, this pedal will, will be further from the center than this one. So... You know, you can just add one of these uh, adapter extensions and place the pedal here. That'll get everything, uh, uh, you know, center with the frame. I don't believe uh, it, it can be done without this to get things centered. Some people may not notice. They may just slap a pedal on there, slap a pedal on there, and, and be good to go. But uh, I kind of like that uh, this side is the one that... Uh, is off center so you do put if you do put a, an extension on here you'll be getting your uh, leg and, and pant legs uh, further away from these uh, dual chain rings so you know if you don't really fabricate a nice uh, chain guard you know that'll be uh, somewhat exposed and can you know tear up your pants or something but a little less likely with one of these extensions to put everything uh, in their proper alignment so uh, that's a good thing for most applications this uh, cyclone uh, mid drive looks like it's going to fit quite well but for me maybe not you know i'm going to have to do a lot of modifying if i want to make uh, this more standard mid drive uh, configuration work but uh, you know i've taken steps already uh, and knew really before I ordered it that you know I might want to uh, just mount the motor in the back and grab onto one of these two uh, sprockets. I placed a second sprocket on that uh, hub there so I can grab on uh, on either one. It, it doesn't matter you know if I grab on uh, uh, with the motor from the back on this one then I can have this be the output drive wheel and the, uh, the driven wheel will be here but if the motor grabs onto here and so the rotation of the motor uh, would be best if I mounted the motor to this one and then have that one going uh, to the output so and the nice thing uh, is that not only uh, are these freewheeling but this is freewheeling too so you know it, it does you don't get 
the magnetic drive and you know until the planetary gear you know kicks in and uh, starts turning those this this is free wheeling so that's one benefit of, of apparently this configuration uh, cyclone that they have the uh, free wheeling uh, uh, mechanism outside the motor the buffoon may may not be and the uh, geared hub motors you know their clutching mechanism is inside the hub motor as well and uh, you know it's a weak link uh, on the uh, uh, geared hub motors but uh, this wouldn't be this wouldn't be a problem if, if you ever did have a problem with the uh, clutch it looks like it's all steel and uh, so it's robust and uh, I like it that it's uh, uh, it's not internal it's external it's uh, very easy to diagnose locate or replace whatever but it does it uh, it accomplishes uh, uh, the defeating of the magnetic drive and that is important because the uh, you know the direct drive hub motors you know it's not defeated they have fewer moving parts so that's a plus but uh, you know they have no clutching mechanisms here you're always uh, you know kind of fighting that magnetic cogging drag some people don't mind you know they're you know always on the throttle so okay they're they're happy or they're out in the dirt and you know riding their bikes more like a motorcycle but for me uh, you know if I can uh, do it I'll uh, uh, tend not to want to have the magnetic drive and on my other trike I, I do have one side that is freewheeling and the other side I modified it to be clutchless because the the clutch the freewheeling mechanism did uh, uh, you know fail and I rather than replace that mechanism which is a little costly and you know I had the part but I decided to go ahead and use the old broken uh, clutching mechanism and uh, just weld it up and see how it would go you know clutchless you know so I would have the planetary gears which gives you a uh, you know a nice gear reduction so you get higher torque and quicker takeoffs but you know the clutching mechanism can you know break down and degrade and sure enough it uh, uh, fail I would spin out it just the motor would spin and you know you got no no traction in the in the motor so I did that, I, and I currently do. I run the two motors together, and one is uh, uh, the uh, uh, clutchless, one is uh, freewheeling. But uh, you know, it's it's not a big drag, uh, and it works well. But really, it's it's a stronger, more robust build on the uh, clutchless side. But you know, with that uh, modification, if you go on my YouTube channel and dig around, you'll see it. Uh, it. Uh, it kind of does give you the benefit of both you know the geared planetary hub gives you that good gear ratio and the uh, direct drive gives you uh, fewer moving parts it's uh, uh, just a tougher more stout build. okay so here's a loose fit up of the uh, trike uh, you know with that mid drive hanging down there and you can see that uh, cargo uh, bin uh, basket I fabricated out of my favorite materials both uh, expanded metal and uh, diamond plate because I just know kids uh, love to jump up uh, and uh, hop in the back of these when you're rolling especially if you you put an electric motor on something like this they'll they'll go crazy but they'll sit in the back and they'll want to touch the wheel you know as it goes around and you know they, it can have uh, rocks and maybe uh, glass or something so you know I just decided yeah we'll prevent that uh, right at the outset on this uh, regardless of whether I keep it or sell it off or do something with it trade it away some some young mother would you know undoubtedly haul her kids or go to the grocery store with the kid in back or something and they'll do that but uh, back to the mid drive you see that baby hangs real low and Another problem with the, uh, you know, the kit as it comes, it comes with these uh, 170 uh, millimeter uh, crank arms, and those are uh, much longer than the ones that uh, uh, really are best suited for this, uh, which are about 135 millimeters, and uh, that's a big difference because you see with a pedal coming down like that, you might catch uh, toe or, or heels going going around here. And, 
And that's no fun. These uh, crank arms really are uh, too long for this application. Even though this is, you know, a, a pretty typical uh, length for a crank arm, uh, for this unit, not so much. And uh, with these uh, big old front sprockets here, see this back one is uh, replaceable. This, uh, oh, I forget what it was, uh, 104 millimeter uh, spacing with the four bolts. This is a common uh, pattern, and uh, this back one can be uh, replaced very easily with a smaller sp sprocket, which would be nice, but, uh, you know, because with a big old long crank arm, a big sprocket uh, powering it is, is not so difficult, but uh, if you shorten these crank arms, like, you know, theoretically I could, I could, uh, you know, tap a... Uh, uh, some threads for uh, pedals at about the 135 millimeter spot. And, you know, I know I wouldn't probably get a uh, reversed uh, tap thread for the other side, but I'd just tap them both standard uh, fashion and uh, <coughs> put some Loctite uh, in there and be done with it and cut them off and grind them off and uh, touch up with some uh, black epoxy paint and, you know, nobody be the wiser as long as I got them you know really perpendicular with uh, everything and I might get lucky and nail it uh, so you know that is uh, a possibility but uh, you know shortening up this then I'd uh, undoubtedly want to get a smaller uh, chain ring going to the back because you shorten these uh, uh, crank arms up, you know, it's not going to be so easy to uh, push this thing around. So dropping this down, now that outer one would be fine because that's going to the motor. The motor would be uh, pulling that uh, furthest one and having the larger sprocket for it is undoubtedly uh, a good thing because that makes it easier for the motor to get turning quicker and uh, I believe that'll, uh, uh, you know, make for uh, good torque and, and quicker takeoff. So I would theoretically leave this uh, outer one at, at the 44 teeth. That's a big sprocket, but you know, it kind of takes away from some of the step through uh, ness of the frame, but uh, I would probably leave, leave that and drop this one down as small as possible. I think I, I saw one already at uh, as low as 30, 30 or 32 teeth for uh, 104 uh, millimeters for a bolt pattern. So I could get this down to 30 or 32 teeth, which would be just about right for a 135 uh, millimeter crank arm. So maybe that'll be fine. But now back to this. And, uh, you know, the, the placement of it isn't the best. I, I was thinking about maybe just flipping this plate over and that would turn it up a little, get it a little more flush with the, uh, the frame area on this flat side. See how this corner point hangs down here? That's, that's not good. If I can rotate it a little and back. But if needs be, I can, these are just flat plates and they can be easily fabricated and, uh, you know, change it any way you want. Except, well, anyway... If I bring this motor up too far, you see it'll hit the uh, the outboard sprocket fine. Nothing gets in its way, but the return chain line, this chain line has to go back in this direction. And uh, if this motor comes up too high, that chain line will start to hit in, in this area here. So uh, it's pretty tricky. You know, I can't go too high up, but maybe if I tilt it and bring it back a little, then that second chain line, especially with the uh, a smaller uh, chain ring put on that in, inside uh, sprocket, then, you know, I could clear it and grab on back here and all would be well. I also notice uh, when I turn the wheel, straight I do get a lot more pedal clearance so you know you see how that goes turn it to the side raise it up and it's a big difference in the pedal height off the ground so I don't know maybe those 
crank arms aren't as problematic, but uh, I still I don't like like a lack of clearance down below there. So let's go uh, look in back for a minute. Okay, and here we are in the back, and as you can see in this tail section, both of the axles from each wheel uh, uh, come into this gearbox area, and uh, they can be fitted up with a, uh, a freewheeling sprocket or a non-freewheeling sprocket pretty easily right back here. And uh, I believe I wouldn't even need a freewheeling sprocket uh, if I mounted the motor back here because right on the motor it has the freewheeling action. If, if you didn't use a, a freewheeling sprocket like this one, uh, I believe you would only get the magnetic drive when you rotated the bicycle backwards. But otherwise it would freewheel fine. And as you can see down here, the hub freewheels, so if you're coasting, uh, you know, you're not going to get any uh, hassle from uh, up front here. And theoretically, I could uh, just uh, put a sprocket uh, right onto the uh, axle itself and, you know, put the motor uh, and just go direct drive out, out one of these uh, wheels. But uh, then it wouldn't be mid-drive, I believe. But uh, if I go over the axle and grab onto the hub, uh, the five-speed hub, then technically it would still be a, a direct drive. And that may really be the... Uh, ultimate solution to this uh, 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 build or this uh, uh, application arrangement configuration so to speak so yeah I'm playing with it I'm having fun uh, it is uh, a little challenging uh, a little more challenging than I thought it would be uh, but uh, I kind of expected just these issues and sure enough here they are and uh, you know we're dealing with them theoretically do it either way but you know, since the uh, motor is uh, driven in this direction, it actually would make more sense to mount it more centered with the uh, gearbox here and grab onto this sprocket and have this as the uh, uh, output side. Input, output. Or direct to uh, an axle. You know, that's another solution. You know, I don't know uh, if there's really going to be a lot of benefit in utilizing the gearbox uh, with the motor or maybe this would be fine I don't know we'll see tires so I suggest if you get a trike inherit a trike somebody gives you a trike go ahead and do that just chop off a couple uh, inches maybe an inch and a half uh, on each side of the tube and bring those axles in, chop them to put the bearings back in and you can narrow a trike very easily Okay, Christian Livingstone here again, and uh, you know, I started this video yesterday and spliced it all up, edited it up, and uh, was getting ready to upload it, but I thought, no, I'll let it linger a minute more, and I, you know, left this trike, uh, you know, sitting uh, so I could kind of look at it, uh, and sure enough, overnight, uh, uh, you know, it uh, came to me uh, this morning that uh, I think I got a good solution. Uh, I, I also thought about, you know, just putting another... Uh, tube right across here just cutting all this out and just having one straight tube or something kind of slung up in, in that direction that way I could put the motor in a more standard fashion mount the bottom bracket underneath a, a different tube up this way you know mount this up forward like most of the people do but uh, then I thought no I uh, I kind of like this uh, uh, style this low slung easy step through a uh, style and uh, I think I'm gonna uh, try to stick with this a little longer and uh, I believe I came up with uh, a solution that will uh, alleviate about three problems all in one felled swoop and uh, you know I'm including this and we'll uh, splice it into the video and I'm glad I didn't upload it already because uh, this is a tip that uh, I believe will be helpful for uh, you know nearly anybody who's already installed one of these on a, a more standard uh, uh, configuration or mounting for these cyclone motors for them it will uh, overcome at least two things that I think are obstacles or a, a little uh, less than an elegant solution and 
uh, of course, one of them is the uh, this big worm drive uh, hose clamp that uh, these uh, kids come with. You know, it goes around the motor, and then uh, they uh, want you to uh, take the zip tie and you know fix the motor up to the down tube uh, so it doesn't wander on its uh, radius. And uh, you know, that's it's kind of tacky, but I, I really don't blame the uh, cyclone producers for doing that because there's so many different bike frame styles uh, whatever they came up with anything that was fixed you know wouldn't fit a lot of applications so this is certainly flexible stuff and uh, would uh, get people going all the sooner until you know they uh, come up with a, a better solution and you know most human beings are pretty clever so uh, you know these kind of uh, things aren't aren't a big deal to me these little stop gap fix it uh, get it going kind of things uh, we see but you know it's it's not uh, it's not pretty so so other than the uh, 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 changing the frame uh, tube there uh, these tubes are uh, an inch and a half uh, diameter and uh, I like to use uh, collars you know one piece collars split collar two piece collars and you can see that's how I'm uh, fitting this up and using it to mount uh, this uh, bin basket on the back. So, you know, I like collars. I just uh, uh, find uh, places to use them. Here's one. It's not the right size, but uh, I'll be ordering two uh, collars uh, with the uh, one and a half inch bore so I can fit right here two of them. And I'll just alleviate all this stuff and uh, fit the motor similarly with some smaller plates right from those two collars in much the same fashion as they fit down here but they won't have to be as wide because they're, they're not hitting right here they'll just they'll be underneath they'll be more discreet and that does uh, a couple of cool things once you get the motor mounted to this tube you see it doesn't wander on that that uh, radius so there's no need for that uh, uh, hose clamp or, or cable tie and not only that that idler down there once once the motor is fitted on two points here to two points down at the motor then it can be slid up and down on this tube and that will give you the, the ability, give me the ability to, uh, to chain tension. You won't need that idler because whenever the chain, you know, uh, stretches a little bit, you can just loosen up those uh, two uh, collars and slide it. You know, if you had a, an inch in either direction, that would undoubtedly take care of. So if you need to, you can put the collars a little closer and even if they straddle out to the motor in this direction, you'll have that latitude to move up and down a tube like that. Now, undoubtedly, that could be done on a forward tube as well. So the, the people that already have a motor right about here, you know, and they've got that hose clamp and that cable tie, and they've got that uh, uh, idler there, and they're thinking, well, you know, I'd like to get rid of some of that cl clutter, make it a little more elegant, a design solution. Uh, you know, if you can follow along with what I'm saying verbally, you know, you've already got it. You've already figured, okay, yeah, two heavy-duty collars welded to a, a couple of plates on each side. A little closer to this tube would be a lot better. You wouldn't see some of this stuff. It could be done up here, slide it up and down, give you the chain tensioning, alleviate that, uh, those two things that are just uh, unneeded at that point. So... That's a tip, and uh, you know, if you can't follow along with, with what I'm saying verbally, stick around the, uh, the uh, uh, electricbike.com uh, uh, forum, and, and you'll see how I do it, and then you'll say, okay, sure, I, I can follow that now. But uh, for some of you guys that are, you know, already kind of fabricating-minded, you've got it. You've, all, you've heard it. You can know it and you can say yeah I can do that sure no problem so there you have it these are the initial stages of my what I'm calling uh, the monster e-trike and you know because it is such a, a robust uh, uh, 
uh, motor that uh, the, the Cyclone kit uh, comes with. And, uh, you know, I got it from uh, Luna Cycle and uh, really uh, a good value. And uh, they also launched uh, just uh, very recently, uh, less than a week, I believe, uh, an e-bike forum uh, at uh, electricbike.com. And it is... Uh, you know, it's started and, and moderated by the uh, Luna Cycle guy. I believe his name is uh, Eric Luna. You know, Luna Cycle, L Lunar Cycle, a little play on words, kind of, kind of clever. But uh, you know, the guy apparently is is a real enthusiast and used to have a couple of, uh, uh, I think, three uh, outlet stores in. Uh, Oh, the uh, West Coast area of the North American continent, uh, not far from where I was born and uh, spent, you know, a good number of my formative years uh, in the South Bay area of the West Coast. Uh, but uh, I believe he also had a store up in uh, the San Francisco Bay area as well. And uh, uh, so he started this forum, and it's uh, very uh, early uh, uh in that uh, forum and uh, he's uh, promoting and soliciting for you know builds you know people who are just uh, doing kind of this some of the same stuff I'm doing right now with that kit that uh, he sells and other kits but you know it's not limited to just what he sells of course so there's uh, all kinds of uh, potential there I think for that forum so I'm you know, going to get on the bandwagon, so to speak, and, you know, document these steps. And, you know, I, I do that stuff anyway with my YouTube channel. So, you know, it's going there first. But uh, also in mind, uh, I'm doing this with uh, uh, them at the, the new forum, uh, uh, too. So, you know, they apparently can uh, uh, benefit from it. And, you know, I'm happy to share anything I've learned. And Undoubtedly, uh, this uh, Luna guy and uh, all the other uh, members uh, at this uh, new uh, e-bike forum, uh, you know, are going to be a wealth of information uh, and experience for me, too, because I'm not an expert, but, uh, you know, I, I like to do stuff, and, uh, you know, e-bikes are a fun thing to do, especially with, you know, some of the little skills that I have that go along with e-bikes, like the welding and fabrication. It's just, uh, it's a natural, and uh, e-bikes are fun, you know, people like them, they're fun to ride, and, uh, you know, there's uh, things that haven't been done before are, are just being done for the first time now, and, you know, uh, so, you know, I, I'm just enjoying it, and I'll uh, undoubtedly continue to enjoy it uh, with this build, but uh, it's going to take a little longer than I thought. It's it's not going to be uh, just a one-two uh, knockout punch and it's over. No, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a process, but uh, so I'll keep everybody informed uh, most likely at the uh, electricbike.com forum and uh, I'll uh, post this video uh, there as well, maybe some clips and you know, as the progress uh, continues, I'll add more and more and, until ultimately it's, it's finished. Okay? Bye-bye.